I'd like to call this meeting to order of the Oxbridge Building Committee. Uh, as usual, the first order of business is to approve the minutes of our. Good morning, David. Good morning. Uh, is to approve the minutes of our last meeting of August 10th. They've been sent out in draft form. Are there any corrections, additions, or changes to those minutes? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes. Marcy is moved and Duke has seconded. All in favor indicate by just raising your hand or saying aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, at this point, we'd like to go into the uh, application, payment application uh, number uh, 20. I'll turn that over to George and to David. Okay, we're um, yeah, we're currently billing the seven hundred and sixty-five thousand, like one seventy-eight. Um, you know, the majority part of it is the um, you know, demo and abatement. So you know, all the demos or the abatement's been completed, and they've started you know knocking down the buildings and hauling it off site. Uh, Schenectady Steel, that's just the fabrication and everything of uh, the steel at D, which is all fabricated and ready to go. Um, you know, general trades is just, you know, some hardware signage, those kind of things in the academic building. Um, you know, kind of acoustics, you know, finishing up the uh, ceiling and installing the uh, acoustical panels in the academic and then you know, flooring you know painting is you know just finishing up working on the you know, finishing up the walls and painting finishing up the floorings in the academic uh plumbing same thing with hvac and and electrical the majority of electrical is the you know the security systems and, and lighting getting those uh, done in, in the academic uh, site work is you know the paving and and all of that around the uh, around the academic building and then the landscaping is is that the plants the trees you know all the siding all that for for the month of August so it's um <clears throat> you know the gross is seven sixty four fifty five plus the fifty one thousand stored material and uh, you know the net is uh, 765-178. Right. And George, we can discuss uh, some of the things that were done when we talk about the progress report. Okay. Yes. Uh, yep. Are there any uh, questions concerning this payment application? Hearing none. I'm sorry, Diane. No, I'm sorry. You didn't have a question. I beg your pardon. Um, I will make a motion to approve the payment application as presented to this meeting. Um, do I have a Do I have a second? I'll second uh, it, Kip. Duke seconds. Okay. Is there any further discussion about this motion? Hearing none. All in favor, please either raise your hand or say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion is carried. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Let's get into the uh, uh, progress report, please. Okay. Um, By the way, George, I just wanted to ask uh, before we got to the, the pictures, uh, George, uh, were the pictures of the demolition uh, taken just recently, rather than at the end of they're taken at the end of August? Yes. Yeah, they were taken. Um, I'm going to say the. Let's see today, like last last week, I think it was early last okay. week. I just want to know how current yeah. they were. Uh, thank you. Okay. Yeah, all those all those pictures were taken um, uh, last last week. Okay. The, um, like the beginning, yeah, like Monday or Tuesday last week. Um, all right, so we're we're showing the uh, substantial completion of the academic uh, August fifth, um, and then you know tracking for the site work and assembly being uh, complete uh, next May of the 20th, uh, 
2023. Um, of the academic wing construction, 99% basically just, you know, working on the punch list and those items. Uh, site work landscaping, about 88% complete. And then the assembly wing construction, uh, 7%. Um, and then we, we did have some PCOs. Good. I reviewed and accepted, so we're still, you know, projecting the, well, we're projecting like nine hundred and fifty thousand. Right. Yep. In our contingency, CMR contingency, yep. and then, you know, the total funds with the allowance, which is you know, over a million. So you know, at this point, it's still, you know, pretty, pretty healthy uh, financially, in good shape. George, can you specifically in the in the uh, the difference from last month to this month was it yeah. uh, used up about about eighty thousand dollars of the of the uh, uh, contingency? Do you know where that primarily went came from? If you don't have it right now, don't don't bother digging. Yeah, I, I can I can pull it out. Yeah, I, I'd have to. I would have to check. All right. Well. Get back to me when you have that later on, if you would. Yes, yes, I will. Thank you. Okay. Um, like I said, we went through the PCOs and all that. Okay, this uh, month of August, there's just one RFI that was issued actually answered we had a PR 41 we kind of talked about that I guess it was at our uh, OAC meeting getting the credit for the locks the ADA locks on the uh, on the lockers um, and then there was some bottom of footing clarifications that was that was a special instruction it doesn't really impact the the, the finances um, as before, far as we, leave the lock, before yep. we leave the locker issue um, for the committee's purpose, I think that there was a uh, some kind of special requirement for ADA reasons that you had to have a special lock on lockers for those people who were handicapped. Um, and I think that, correct me if I'm wrong on this, Luke, you, you persuaded Jeff Lamoth that the way that you're, you and your teachers interact with the, those students we didn't have to have that special lock. Is that correct? Yes, but you don't want the lockers to begin with, so they're all just latches, and then they share with us that the latches that were put. And then if a student had any mobility challenge or fine motor challenge at first, um, we provide support for that. And so we're not in any danger from for being cited by the state for not having those, because we're not putting locks on the lockers. Correct. Yeah, and then okay. the latches we did confirm are are all the latches are ADA uh, compliant. So, Excellent. Um, okay. Right. So so yeah, you're you're in compliance. It's only when if you're going to use locks that you would have to have this. It's basically a battery operated push push button yeah. lock as opposed okay. to like a padlock. But but they're all in, actually all the latches on the lockers are ADA compliant. Okay. And then the PCOs that were actually reviewed and, and then for approval, we had uh, revis revised the water meter header that was at the request of Aquarian, um, basically the location of the of the backflow preventer. Uh, the Aquarian required it to be um, behind the behind the meter as opposed to in front of the meter, which which what was originally shown. So we had to move that uh, fire stopping on top of some some walls in the they were um, offices that the fire marshal and building inspector requested that we fire stop top of those walls um, and then PR 38 and 39 was issued to power the front row system I think there was two rooms where it didn't show having power to the uh, to that front row system uh, so we had to add those and then um, added some outlets and, and stuff some offices which kind of came out of the the furniture locations and request as furniture was being moved we added some outlets for that added exit signs um 
was at the request of the, the fire marshal. There was about eight signs that needed to be added you know, throughout the building, mostly for corridors. And then smoke detectors in the elevator vestibule, which was came out of our elevator um, inspections um, to add some smoke detectors. And, and those are the vestibules that are going to the uh, to the courtyard. We had to add two, two, uh, two smoke detectors. And then the rest are currently being in reviewed or you know kind of on hold until um, you know, further further notice. Uh, schedule activity revisions. Um, we, we were delayed somewhat with the with the demo as far as um, finding a or with the soil removal. Um, uh, so finally resolved that. But the demo contractor, in order to make up the time, he's been working ten hour days and Saturdays to uh, you know to make up that time. So so right now. You know the buildings are down, um, both the 96 and the, and the 50s building. They're they're down, and right now they, you know, trucking off the the concrete, the steel, and then the general debris. So I, I would say, yeah, they quite picked up the place quite a pace, quite a bit. They, they've had, let's see, less since Monday. They, Monday they had about 10 trucks go out. Uh, yesterday it was uh, like 20. And then today they're anticipating another 10. So I would say by the end of the month, you know, all the all the debris should be uh, should be off site. And then the only thing really left are the um, the concrete pads. The the 96 building, that concrete pad is is down the slab. And then you know by by the end of the month, we'll just start removing the, the slabs of the 56 building. So. George where, where, George, where are they hauling uh, that material to? Um, well, the the general the the general material, if you will, that's that's going out to um, to Ohio, I believe. Unbelievable. The, uh, yeah, the the concrete, um, you know, the concrete uh, with the slabs, um, you know, that not being uh, hot, if you will. That's going to actually North North Haven, and then uh, the steel the, um, the steel that's not painted, I believe, is going to Pennsylvania, and then right now they're looking for the the, the red steel. We actually took a test on the PCB on the red steel. It was actually a little over the one parts per million, but it was under the fifty parts per billion threshold, which means that like states like New York. Massachusetts could take that material almost as clean fill. So I, I think right now um, American Environmental is kind of securing a place for that. They'll probably either go to New York or, or Massachusetts, that red steel. Kip, unless you want some of it, we can probably drop a load off at your house. <laughs> wonderful. Just wonderful. I mean, it, it's crazy because George has pointed out that in Connecticut, if it's it was a five one part per million or five parts per million, it can't be in Connecticut. Other states say if it's fifty parts per million or under, it can be in their state. So we have to yeah, hold out of state in many cases. It's crazy. It is. I, I never knew that. It's it's all depends on the region that you're in. <laughs> George, I'm just curious, is there any recycling of any of the materials going on? Like this this deal, I would assume, um, or is well, it really the, just all the, gone to a landfill somewhere? Yeah, I, I guess it depends. Like the concrete would probably get recycled because it's clean. Um, you know, as Kip was mentioning, because it's under 50 parts per million, I'm not sure how they handle that in New York and Massachusetts, if they would recycle it or just go in the landfill. I, I think, I'm not sure how they would do that. Like in Connecticut, it would just have to go to a landfill because it's over one part per million. Because it's under, they might be able to recycle it in, in New York or Mass or wherever they, they take it. But um, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, and then procurement issues, really none currently, only because we did most or pretty much all of the purchasing in the first phase and and, and the storing storing the material off-site.
Um, and, and as uh, as said, the site work, when we completed the landscaping around the academic building, and that included the sod. And um, I think Luke, right the other day, you guys started using the in that one area, so it looks pretty good. Yeah. Um, demolition, uh, we completed the abatement of the soil interior in the interior of the 50s building. Completed the demolition of the 96 building, and then we started demolition of the 50s building. I mentioned that that's down, and we just saw the material off site. Site work started excavating for footings. Um, and then, and then the, the concrete uh, composite, so he's been on site and he's starting uh, forming the footings. And we have scheduled a, a pour for the footings um, Friday. So then we're just moving along, along with those. Were you able to remove the uh, soil nails? Yes. Yep. Okay. They, uh, yes, they removed the soil nails. Um, I, I think actually they're they're coming back there there's a couple areas where they have to um, remove more but for the most part the soil nodes have been have been removed so um, like i said schedule wise we're tracking the uh but george as you're going through the schedule page 22 uh are we behind in the assembly wing in terms of uh our progress in terms of demolition and all that, or are we going to catch up? Well, yeah, I think I think with um, with the um, we're pointing to on the schedule. Yeah, a couple. Of things. I, I think we're going to catch up. And what we've done is we've we've kind of overlapped. I mean, the the schedule always showed us overlapping the um, you know the site work with with the uh, the demolition of the building. I think it was yeah. showing like, uh, you know, maybe uh, 10 days overlap, but we actually are going to increase it to, you know, probably around um, 15 to 20 days overlap. So right now the the demo is completed at the footprint of the, uh, of the building, the assembly wing building. So we're continuing, you know, with the site work and we're excavating for footings and foundations. Um, and one final question, when are we going to get the uh, railing into the courtyard? We're way overdue uh, on that one. That, yeah, that's scheduled for the uh, 24th. It's going, to, it's going to bring the material wow. on site in the courtyard, and that's the Saturday, the 24th. I read the minutes. I read the, I read the, I watched the Vimeo of the last meeting, and we talked about having it in by the, the end of August. So here we are at the end of September. That's got yes. to get in. I don't know who we have to beat on. Is, is it uh, uh, Schenectady? No, it's uh, Sean's lawn. So I did have a conversation with him yesterday. Um, yeah, and I can I can talk to him maybe again today and see if we could um, push it. To... I mean, has it been fabricated? Yeah, he said he's in the process of finishing up the fabrication. Now, he, he scheduled it for the 24th. Only because it's Saturday and obviously the kids are are in school, but um, maybe we could work out something. I'll I'll see if you know we could get in there, you know maybe before that Saturday, you know like. All right, I, under, I under, you know, second understand shift. the Saturday idea. Yeah. Okay. So I I can you know just verify that if he's fabricated before the twenty fourth, maybe we get him in on the second, uh, you know after four or something to. to start the work pick up a few days there and i have um two other questions about um items of completion on the exist on the new building and that's um one is the sign the letters for the sign and also the mural for the staircase wondering what the schedule is for those to arrive and be installed yeah the um the letters for the sign the exterior were we're um, working out some details as far as the gray color with the um, with the exterior signs. So uh, you know it's going to match. It's, it's it's to match the uh, curtain walls. So the sign company is, is supposed to send me some color samples. Um, 
you know, in the next couple days so that we could verify it. And I think that's been the holdup with these with these exterior sign is trying to match that that gray color of the uh, curtain curtain wall. And then the um, the mural on stair one, I do have the um, proof sample of the uh, you know of that mural. And then you know I'm gonna Jeff's gonna be out here tomorrow for the OAC meeting, Jeff Lamont. So I'll give him that sample um, to to show and, and um, you know the review. But I did get that sample uh, the other day. Is there a painting that doesn't match the the metal of the um, aluminum framing? What's that? Is there a difficulty in getting the color that we asked for? The there was um, it, it was the uh, the color because the color was um, like a Sherman William color for the uh, it was a custom color for the aluminum. So they're, they're, they were having difficulty finding like the standard Pantone color that, that matches that, that custom color. So we had to do some, some research to, to, to match like the Pantone is that, you know, it's like the universal color selection. Yeah. So we had to find, find that Pantone color number that would match the custom color for the uh, curtain wall, which we did. Um, so, you know, I sent all that to, uh, actually, I, I found a, a, a couple Pantone color numbers that, that would, you know, like a range, if you will. So I sent that yeah. to the um, to the sign vendor, you know, through OWI, and they're supposed to give us some samples so that, you know, we can, we can match it. That was the, the difficulty. Okay. There so, wasn't a Pantone so number there... for that curtain wall. Mm -hmm. So when Jeff's there tomorrow, he you'll have those samples that he can just hold up against the aluminum curtain wall. No, I don't have the samples for the curtain wall. I have the um, the proofs for the um, the stair stair one vinyl covering. That's well, okay. Right. You do have the proofs and, for that. And, so that's Diane's other question. One. But I'm right, I'm asking about the, the sign. Yeah, I don't have those samples yet. I'm I'm expecting them okay. in, but I just I don't have them. Okay. So what, why don't we why don't we do this um, over the course of the next few days? Uh, we'll work on getting the committee updates on those items. You know, when the when the when we anticipate the sign, when we anticipate those graphics, and just we'll yeah, communicate those to you so you understand. No, no, George. As far as when they'll actually be able to install it, not the sample. Just when is the end. The question is, when's it going to be done? Right. So let's let's work over the next few days to get updates on when these things will actually be done and installed, not just the sample review process. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. And then the, um, you know, just the pictures. That's part of the demo. Uh, you know, this is the northwest part of the site. That's our retaining pond for the soil erosion or the soil, I mean, the erosion control. Um, and the portables, that's kind of showed them being, being down. Um, you know, this is, you know, looking east. That's our temporary wall, part of the demo. Um, Uh, this is the southwest part of the site. So, as you can see, actually, this slab's gone now. Um, these are actually the soil nails, and then this this part of the slab is is gone and off site. Another um, part of the demo. Again, demolition. And then this is the starting the footing uh, for the um, for the assembly building in this this area right here. That's that's going to be the footprint of the assembly building. So you know all the 
demolition and debris kind of removed from that area. You know, the footing. That's taken from the roof, actually. And that's along the uh, the academic building, so they've started excavating for the footings as well. And that's the front of the building. <clears throat> it's on the west side. You know, we did the siding. You know, the landscaping's complete. Along the road, the access road. And yeah, then that's just turning the corner kind of on the south side. Showing the retaining wall, the south elevation. And that's the, you know, the side, and that's where they started, you know. <clears throat> and just going around the corner. That's the temporary playground, and then that's all the engineered wood fiber mulch. Ten thousand dollars worth of fiber mulch. It makes a lot of dust. <laughs> yeah. It's just the east elevation. They were able to, you know, they had some sod kind of left over, so they were able to sod these areas um, as well you know, and, um, with what they had left over. And again, just, just the front. Yeah, I and mean, that's the other, like southwest, the other area that's sided. Oh, Luke, are they using that area right now? That outside area? Yep, they're both live. Good. Okay. Good. And then just the um, the courtyard. Are we going to get those uh, yellow yellow uh, rails out soon? Or are they still working on the roof? Yeah, no, I, actually, the, uh, yeah, they can, these can come, we've taken those down, whereas, you know, laid them down, so they'll, they'll, they'll come out and go on the D building, so yeah, we can take the rest of them down, because they're complete with the, um, the coping on the roof, and okay. these, this is just the temporary rail, or that's where that stainless steel guardrail is going to go, so they, yeah. they aren't using the courtyard now, but we did put up a temporary guardrail, you know, if they did want to go out there. But they can't use the courtyard yet, Luke? No, I'm not permitting it until those handrails are in and we're verified they're installed and safe for just holding off. Yeah, right. that's why I'm anxious for that, that seal rail to be put in. I appreciate okay. it. Okay. Okay. Then I did, any, any, other, other questions? any other questions? All right, thanks, George. Um, let's talk about our furniture. Um, we had some issues with, we probably we talked about them last time, that the desks were, uh, legs were too narrow for the chairs that we purchased. So we have now 328 chairs in our uh, various utility rooms that don't fit beneath the desks. We are using our stacked chairs 
that will be eventually in the auditorium gymnasium um, temporarily as uh, uh, chairs for those uh, for the third, fourth, and fifth grade uh, uh, classrooms. The, um, the district has determined that they will not be using the 328 chairs elsewhere in the district. So we're now going to work on uh, finding a solution uh, to the excess chairs. In addition, there were a number of items that seemed to be uh, missing, and, and uh, Amanda put together a list, and then uh, Dr. Forshaw has gone through that list to verify what is missing, what is needed, what is not needed. Um, and I think, Luke, you just you can speak to this. You got back to Amanda yesterday, I believe, with a, your summary. That's right. Yeah, we, we've been working closely with SLAM to look at all of the items that were delivered, what still were waiting for delivery, and then just sort of what items were, what might be landing here as part of the ff &E that has not. And so they've done um, a, a nice job in terms of pulling together from their vantage point, you know, their timetables, what they think um, might still be outstanding. And so we've been exchanging notes on that. Um, I had my team review it. I reviewed it to look at you know, all the items that we need here. Um, so I think the output will be next slam will produce for us um, quantity of value based on vendor pricing the items that whatever set of givens want initially purchased. Um, so I think that might be a outstanding item and potentially an ask back to the committee um, for some items that will be uh, requested for requisition. Otherwise, um, we're just making sure that if there are items that are on the delivery timetable that we're holding to that timetable, getting them into the school. Okay. Amy, so it looks like the ball will be now in, in your court to come back with some estimates of, uh, or some, I guess, quotes on things that are needed that are not there yet. That's correct. Yep, we just got this yesterday. Amanda's already on it. Um, and okay. I do have a report on the Verco's Zuma chairs, the, the 300 plus extra chairs that you mentioned, Kip. I spoke with uh, the Verco rep this morning to get an update we were waiting. I had not heard uh, until this meeting that the district definitely does not want to use them anywhere else. Um, that would be your most cost effective um, use because they, uh, you know, they're already yours and they do fit any student. They're adult size chairs. They're um, anyone third grade and up, uh, including high school, middle school, whatever. But hearing that you don't want to use them, Erica is able to resell them to a client. Um, she said she can she can sell them quickly because they would be at such a discounted rate, unfortunately, like 50% from the original cost, just because they're now considered used, even though they were never used. Um, and I think they're stored very carefully. Um, so there would be, you know, you'd, you'd get back approximately 50% on the dollar and they were in the $30,000 range. I don't have an exact, but I know, um, Kip, you do have that, um, Verco invoice. So we can work together on that. Um, and, and obviously she'll look for um, a church or a school that is as close as possible to Darien so that the shipping and moving expenses are kept to a minimum. Okay, well, we'll, we'll talk afterwards. Um, Great. Probably have to do that tomorrow because I have a meeting right after this one as well. Um, okay. As to where we go next. Okay. All right. Uh, then we had a, a great ribbon cutting event. Thanks to Katie putting this together. Um, and thank you, Katie, for getting that Vimeo out to everybody. I put it into the agenda. I hope people could actually go see it. Um, but I'll let you comment on the on the ceremony because you put it together. Um, thank you. We had a really great turnout, which was wonderful. Um, I think that there it's possible there could have been a hundred people. There were definitely sixty. It's hard to get um, it's hard to get a count when people are kind of just in a in a crowd. Um, but there was a lot of enthusiasm. Um, I want to thank the committee also for the thoughtfulness and the agreement, um, agreeing to inviting the two alumni classes of the students who had 
been on campus for construction, but not attending, um, I got some just really heartfelt gratitude um, and excitement of people that were just dying to see the school and were so excited to be included. Um, it was particularly lovely that Dr. Adley just invited all students up and um, there were a lot of alumni in the photo. Um, I think it was just really, really nice for them to feel that they would always be a legacy of that school and part of the community. Um, and honestly, that's what it's all about. That's the whole point of the ribbon cutting, right, is to celebrate this great work that everyone's doing. So really excited about that. Um, I don't I don't know that everybody was there um, and I'm not sure if everyone saw, but also really exciting that um, Amy so graciously reached out to um, Dean Ober, um, I really wanted, I had in my head like this little notebook that he used to carry around with like sketches and I wanted to use it for the program. And he um, he did confide in me um, when he was at the event that um, he had them, but they were packed away. And so he just redid a new one for the program, which was just like incredibly kind. And he came and saw the building and um, it was pretty amazing to see a, a seasoned professional get so excited about his creative work coming to life. So. Um, really great work to ONG and AIM AP for for really you know taking abstract and creative thoughts and making it come real. Um, going off on a bit of a tangent, <laughs> but anyway, really excited and um, and we learned a few things logistically that for our our full ribbon cutting opening of a full thing, um, I think that we will probably ask committee um, and board members to come in advance so that we can take photos um, before the ribbon gets cut very spontaneously um, and everyone pours into the building because fire alarm or not, it was hard to keep people out of the building. They were so excited. So thank you for everyone's efforts and attendance. Um, and I'm excited to do it again in a year. Just as a side note, um, I talked with Dean um, over uh, somewhere during the tour. And he said, I think Diane was at the same time we was there. He said his day was made when a student walked in, saw the car yard and said, wow, this is really cool. He said, I'm done. I can go home now. I've done, I've done my thing. He was very pleased about that with regard to the courtyard. Um, well, as Luke can attest, children will give it to you straight. They're not going to sugarcoat it and spare your feelings. So that is definitely a true compliment. Well, he was he was ecstatic. I can tell you that. Um, anything else to be discussed this morning on the project? Anybody else have anything yeah. you want to talk about? Diane? I, have, I want to give just a really quick recap. I had a conversation with um, some folks over at Eversource recently and just wanted to give everybody an update. Um, we're still um, charted to receive over um, 87,000, I think is the number, for um, from Eversource for um, energy rebates. And um, so um, I wanted to uh, touch base with them. Well, they wanted to touch base with us mostly because they had a new person uh, who's going to be working with us. Um, fortunately for me, it's a woman who was a classmate of mine in my master's program. So it was kind of fun to reconnect with her. And she's really smart and organized. So I think we're in good hands with this. Um, but basically, I wanted to make sure with them that there wasn't anything we needed to submit since we're doing a two-phase project. Um, the rebates will all come, or the incentives will all be awarded when the building's entirely complete. So we can't get partial incentives at this point, but um, it might make sense for us to go ahead and open up a file and start submitting materials because um, most of the equipment is in place. Um, and um, there's a lot of paperwork tied to this incentive work, including providing submittals for um, a lot of the um, mechanical and electrical equipment, including um, transmittals for all the electric fix, uh, for all the light fixtures and whatnot. So um, I called Amy and Greg's attention to that over at SLAM and Greg, um, Greg is um, reaching out to Eversource and kind of getting some, you know, and he's going to follow up. And I'm hoping that we'll go ahead and start the file now. I just think it'll be easier to go ahead and submit all the materials related to phase one now. Keep that on file. I think it'll, it'll speed up the final um, submissions, which all have to happen when the building's entirely complete and inspections have been done. So um, just an update on that. We're st and nothing's changed. We're still slated to get those funds. It'll just happen after the building's entirely complete, um, you know, and after the inspections are all done. Okay, interesting. It'd be somebody that you worked with before, or was a in your in your class. Um, 
are there any other uh by the way diane the the solar project will be done by the district um when the school is all completed so that would be an add-on but that'll come in later obviously and I think that uh, Kevin um, Monred, the director of facilities, is, is looking at putting all of the schools together under one program, which would be a big project. Okay. So obviously no intention of putting solar panels on the roof over the course of the next year. That's all going to happen in one in one project when the building's entirely complete. When it's, when it's yeah. all complete, right. So then people that have a as-built of the roof, they don't have to worry about having planned it out, then it's not the right way, whatever. Right, okay. and I think that's good knowledge to have out there too, because if people are seeing the building, I know my husband looked at the building and was like, wow, no solar panels on the roof, so they're coming, you know, th that's in the plan. Exactly, exactly. Anything else from the on the project? Uh, there's no public comment. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. No one wants to adjourn. Okay, <laughs> Diane and Marcy, seconds. All in favor, please indicate by raising your hand. Thank you all very much. Have a great month. Thanks, Kip. Bye, everyone.